Hey Turtle Nerds, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I wanna talk about some things that I do to make sure that my turtles get the best diet possible and how I round out and vary their diet pretty much as best as I can. The first thing we shall do today is put on these beautiful slippers. No, we wanna check on how Mr. Pinky is doing and make sure that he's not prolapsed anymore and probably change out some of his water. Let's check out here. Oh yeah, hi buddy. You looking and feeling better? That water's a little yellow, I think, from the Betadine that I put in, but we, yeah, I'm gonna put in a, a nice little bit of water so he can like fully submerge a little bit. Let me first put him in this little container, check out his tail, make sure everything's okay, and then clean this out as quickly as I possibly can because I want to do like the least stress, make it as stress-free as possible. First thing I'm gonna wanna do is pull him out. Check on his tail. It looks very good. And now stay there. Easy, 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 stay there. I wanna cover him so that way he doesn't get as stressed out. I need two hands to carry that, so bear with me, folks. Just kidding, it's extraordinarily light. I'm gonna rinse it out with very hot water to try to sterilize it a little bit. I wanna clean this thing out as best as I can. Paper towels. Better. Now let's put this back. Okay, and now I just need to fill it up. So I wanted to fill this with like really good water, like literally drinking water before because Pancake's prolapse was like out and I didn't want anything infecting it or touching it. Now that it's back in, the tap water shouldn't be an issue. I thought that the chlorine or whatever that's in the water would really, really irritate him. It probably shouldn't now that his prolapse is back in his tail. That should be good. Just enough to, for him to like submerge. Beautiful. Now we'll take Mr. Cake here. Hello, sir. Make sure you didn't prolapse again. No, but it looks kind of puckery. Yeah, definitely some scar tissue that looks like it's trying to come out there. So it's a nice, nice warm water. You can see he's definitely swimming just a little bit funny with that. So I just want to make him comfortable. So we're gonna take this towel and put it back over the entire thing. I'm gonna fix that, but that's generally how this setup is gonna go. Hi there, buddy. Are you having fun not being prolapsed? So unfortunately, Pancake is gonna have to stay in this enclosure for probably another week, probably about seven days from today. And the reason for that is because I don't want to feed him for a while. I wanna make sure that all of that scar tissue has come off. I wanna make sure that he's 100% before putting him back in the pond in deep water. So basically, I also don't want him to eat because otherwise then he might prolapse again. If he eats, then he's gonna have to pass that. And the, the issue last time was that he pushed too hard and that's what caused the prolapse. So like I mentioned, once they prolapse once, they're very prone to do it again. So I'm just trying to take as many precautions as I possibly can with my little angel because Pancake is, I had him at the same time that I'd been, I had those two before I had any of the other Terrapins outside. Oh my God, look, both baby spotted turtles are up basking. Okay, I was gonna film a bunch Lunch and then eat lunch, that rhymes, but I want to let these little baby spotted turtles feel comfortable and bask, and the longer that they bask, the more comfortable they'll feel. So I'm gonna leave them, and I'm just gonna go eat lunch now. Literally, I got my headphones on, which means I'm lunch ready, but before I do that, I wanna come running out here really quickly, just to make sure, because I haven't checked on anyone today. We got Bean, we got Flipper up there, so our two girls, Dragon Fruit, and the others should be somewhere. I just wanna, there's Dragon Fruit. I just wanna do a checkup and make sure everyone's looking okay. There's Crush, there's Urkel up there. So just before I relax, oh, there's a dragonfly stuck. Hey, 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 look, here you go. Bye, friend. Yeah, I just, I want to make sure that everyone's looking okay. There's nobody stuck somewhere. That right there is little Mochi. I just wanna make sure that, for example, young Mochi there is not, you know, stuck. You know, it's not very common that Terrapin, may I help you? Um, excuse me. Well, uh, as I'm saying, it's not very common that terrapins will like get stuck in and under stuff. You know, they can usually wiggle themselves out of most situations. So check this out. Look, here she comes. Hi, baby. There we go. Okay, so she looks good. You can see dragon fruit. You can see most of our star players. We got Urkel there. We got Bean there. But anyway, our, our star players, as I call them, are all here so I can relax 
go eat a little something, and then get everybody fed. Oh, there's little crouton right underneath that leaf. Okay, so let's chat about some things that you guys are really gonna wanna know when keeping turtles and how to raise them nice and healthy, like these little buggers. Here's one of my spotted turtles right here. So one of the number one things that we want to do is keep their environment and their diet as naturalistic as possible. We wanna feed them a nice high protein or as close to what they would get in the wild as possible. So most turtles, nearly all of them, when they're younger, like these little spotted turtles here, they eat more protein, more bugs, invertebrates, worms, snails, little things like that. And then as they grow, they will eat more fruits and veggies and things like that. You want to keep a nice, well-rounded diet. Most people just feed commercial pellets and whatnot. And in order to try to round out the diet as best as I can for my turtles, so right here I have this five gallon bucket and in it, if I could open this please, well, in it is what I have here that's not as mixed as it should be, but we have a nice, well-rounded diet for the turtles. So we have all of this type of food here. I have little dried shrimp, little dried mealworms, there's dried fish in here as well, dried snails. There's like three or four different types of pellets to try to round out the diet and make it as naturalistic as possible. We have some wild type freeze-dried shrimp here. We have some of these larger shrimp given to me by a friend. We have like little reptomen sticks, mostly Missouri aquatic turtle diet because that is a really good staple for most turtle species. Just all kinds of really, really good stuff here. Oh, and I think this is like a feeder block or something. This was also a gift from a buddy. So I just need to refill my little containers of food and I refill it from this main container here. There we go. So I just refilled this little container. We've got a nice mix of pellets now that I can use for all of my turtles basically. So I have these terrapins who are nearly primarily carnivorous, but they would be finding mussels, snails, limpets, mollusks, and things in the wild. These guys would be finding fruits, veggies, insects. They live more in like the forests and whatnot in these vernal pools. This fella is an Asian box turtle, so these two have very more similar diets, which is why I want to vary theirs more than these guys. These fellas, I give them shrimp and fish and more meaty seafood type stuff. And as I prepare these guys in their little feeding enclosure, I just want to reiterate how I'm using all different types of foods and all different types of pellets in order to try to vary the diet. So what one may be lacking in vitamins or nutrients, another pellet can make up for. And supplemented with this, I also use live foods, fiddler crabs, shrimp, snails, things like that. As a staple though, this stuff is good, but I like to have a nice pellet mix rather than just one brand. That way, you know, it's, it's more varied. You want to vary everything, including the, the pellets that you use. Here we go. Got all these pellets because I know that these guys are going to eat quite a little bit today and we're going to pull them out one at a time. One at a time, but we're going to pull all of them out. Hey, no bitey crazies. And there we go. Now, as I mentioned, well, I don't know how much can I, I don't know how much can I possibly talk about varying the diet and including a bunch of different types of pellets rather than just one type. That way they can just really, really make sure they get all of their vitamins and the minerals and different nutrients. And there's little amounts of things called trace elements, which may be present in one type of food than another. And that's why I just mix all of my pellets, whether they like it or not, no matter what's their favorite, they're going to eat all of them. And so that's the reason that I do things the way that I do things and how I mix up all of my pellets and dried foods and, and other different little things in there. Hello friends, I see that we're done early today. Hi Blueberry, goodbye Blueberry. They didn't eat as much as I thought they would, so this I'm gonna dump in the grass and it will make it grow like crazy. But here next we have to feed our spotted turtles and let me explain a little bit about what I'm doing special today to feed these guys. Now before I go ahead and feed Mr. Butternut, I just wanna make sure that he's got enough hydration, enough water in this little enclosure. Oh, look, he's hungry. Oh, he can smell the food from when I open that pellet container and he's hungry. Yeah, look at him, he's coming running over. Coming running over, he's looking for some food. I'm gonna give him a little bit more water than that. So a box turtle and a spotted turtle, as I mentioned, very similar diets. They would be able to find these in the wild. We are going to rinse them off some night crawlers and feed these guys some worms, which is gonna be pretty fun. Now, Butternut here is very, very hungry. Hungry. He keeps running around all over the enclosure looking for some food. So I need to go ahead and, and get some of these worms washed up and clear off some of the dirt. That way he does not ingest any icky nasties and he just gets pure unfiltered worm. Look at how he dips his little head underwater. That is like the coolest thing. Hi buddy. There we go. Let's find one of these buggers. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Thank 
Thank you. I'm gonna go waterboard them and then come back when they're nice and clean. I hear you, you're hungry. Come on, bud. Go get it. Do you need some assistance here, buddy? Let me show you what you're missing. There you go. Now he's gonna go for it. Now he's gonna go grab it. So now he's gonna have plenty of time to sort of fiddle with that, play with it, rip it up, and turn it into bite-sized little manageable pieces. There he goes. Nice. All right, I'll be back to feeding the second one. I just went and got my hairs cut, but that looks like one happy little turtle down there. Hi, Butternut. Look at him all like buried up in the sphagnum moss in the water. I wonder if he wants another worm. Oh, okay, probably not. So I've still got one worm here and I would like to give at least pieces of it to my spotted turtles. Okay, so I'm gonna need to probably chop it into pieces, which might be a little graphic, so I'm gonna just not show that and just show me feeding the pieces to the baby spotted turtles. Okay, let's take a little piece of worm here and give it to this little guy. Oh, there, nice and blurry on the camera. It's good eating. Look, it's still wiggling. Go get it. Come on, little friend. All right, fine, I'll toss you another piece. Right here, bud. Come on, dude. Seriously. So like worst case scenario, if he doesn't eat it right now, if I leave, he will absolutely find those two pieces later. So I'm like not really too stressed about this. All right, buddy, here you go. Do you see it? It's right there. The fish are eating it more than the turtles are. Well, I'm just gonna have to trust that he's gonna go and find them. Here, buddy, do you wanna bust up an entire worm by yourself? There he goes. He's getting chunks bitten off. Nice, buddy. Come on, go ahead and grab it. There he goes. There's one hungry little baby. And there's another in the back who's taking a look and wants a little piece. Okay, someone got mad. Everyone here is all done eating. Now we head outside with these. My apologies in advance for the wind. I do not control the weather. Let's feed the box and spotted turtle that I have. They are gonna go crazy for these worms. So inside were our baby spotted turtles and out here we have my adult male spotted turtle and he loves worms. Watch this. Oh, there he goes. Now he's gonna take it into the water to finish it off. <laughs> awesome. There he is just shredding the thing up. That little booger is one of my best eaters. So he already just ate the entire thing. Let's look for Mr. Otis the box turtle because he is gonna wanna get in on this. All right, buddy, I'm pulling you out of hiding right here, but there's a reason. Just wait, friend. Watch this, y'all. <laughs> so he's gonna take it, probably run away with it into a little uh, hide. And until then, we want to give another one to Mr. Jelly, the spotted turtle, right here. Here you go, buddy. There he goes, he just nailed it. So now we've got a nice and happy, hi, that's me. We got a nice and happy spotted turtle. He's had two worms. We have a nice and happy little baby box turtle back there. Now I really want to feed, not the terrapins, because the terrapins, I don't think they really like worms. Particularly my koi, I would like to feed these two. So let's see if they'll eat them. There it goes. Someone should eat it. I'm also gonna release one in here for them to find later. Um, I know that the box turtle will hunt for it and we can also give it a chance at freedom. Louie, this is not for you. 
Not for you, puppy. You will get sick and throw up, and then you will eat your throat up because you're weird. Let's throw him another one. Hey, Koi, come back. There it goes. There, one of the little koi grabbed it, the little platinum one. So when I try to feed and round out and vary my diet, I try to think what would make sense that my animals would eat in the wild. For koi, worms make sense. For terrapins in the salt marshes though, I think worms also make sense. So let's see, who wants one? There you go. Enjoy. Yeah, this is nothing that you're used to, huh, love? Here, Flipper, you wanna play tug of war? I wanna see her try to eat this. I'm very curious if she actually will. Some people's terrapins don't actually like worms. They don't like to eat them. Yeah, dragon fruit dropped it. Oh! Crouton bit off a piece and ran with it. Who the heck was that? Oh, that was Flipper. Hi, Bean. Here you go. There she goes. She's got that in the bag. All right, folks, who's hungry? Grab a crouton, grab a crouton. Mochi here. Nope, get back you. There, go Mochi, go Mochi. She got it, is she gonna eat it? Crouton will if she doesn't. <laughs> Listen, if y'all don't eat it, the koi absolutely will. And I want to feed some to the koi as well. Uh, we might not have any left here. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one.